Hello? Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Oh, but, uh, shit. What is it? Oh, I just tweaked my back there. Oh, fuck. Oh, you're going to hear pains and groans for me and I'm not having a chug. <laughs> it's not like you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the reason that you do this with a telephone, Derek. <laughs> no, no other camera. You're that's de- bastard. defamation, man. Not defecation, defamation. <laughs> no, the pod's de- defecation. <laughs> <laughs> We will move, yes. move on now. You sound like uh, Sean Connery there again. Yes. yes, yes, tennis. I haven't even got a racket. We've done Out this one before, go. yes. <laughs> Derek Dunny, please. <laughs> <laughs> Folks and welcome to the pre-season 2017-2018 episode of the I Ready podcast. As ever, I'm your host Derek, and with me is my co-host Dave. Good morning, Derek. How are you doing? I'm fucked. My back is absolutely killing me. I've been off work, and I'm almost taking enough time off, like yourself as well, with our illness. <laughs> what, what, what are you trying to say? They're milking it. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still off as well, Derek. Still uh, recovering from my surgery. So it'll be a few weeks before I'm back to normal. But enough about us, Derek. Let's talk about the fantastic things that have been going on at our beloved football club. Oh, what's that fantastic? I heard it was all Mike. Actually, you know, he's the he's the main man now, isn't he? Is he? Oh well, that's a corny sum. A corny sum, yeah. That, that that would be the ones looking at green tent, yeah, green tented, green tinted <laughs> spectacles out there who are absolutely raging for the fact that we now look as if we're finally on the right track, Derek. I'll let you get into everything uh, in the next section, but. Put it this way, it's the most upbeat that all of us Rangers fans have been and we really can't wait now for the season to start and it will start properly tomorrow night. It will do, yes. Uh, UEFA Cup, we'll get into that obviously. Yep. Or Europa League, I should say now. Europa League, yes. Rebranded. Um, but yes, well, there's no structure to this podcast tonight because obviously it's our, our tonight, today even. Has there, has there ever been any structure to a podcast? <laughs> I, know, I know you try, but I kind of waffle on and go back and forward and it makes it quite difficult for you to actually keep it to a structure, but... Uh, Aye, uh, well, I, was, I wasn't wanting to say anything there. But least, <laughs> it's, the fu- it's no fucking like <laughs> Yes, um, obviously uh, everybody knows by now there's no point in going over it in great depth, but um, on the back of 32 Red signing up to be our shirt sponsors for the next two years, yes, I did say this in a tweet uh, about a week beforehand, but now the retail deal has been sorted. <laughs> Yes, absolutely fantastic, Derek, and it has basically been an absolute free-for-all. It's like uh, Black Friday in Asda when you see everybody running into the store to grab all the TVs and the games consoles. That's what the mega store has been like. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Everybody's went out and basically bought everything, so much so that there is hardly any stock left. There's no men's tops available anywhere. Uh, I'll let you get into the ins and outs of what it's all about, but it's just fantastic. Everybody's just going out and spending loads, which can only be great for the club. Yeah, so I'll make Dave a wee bit jealous because I'm sitting here recording this in my brand new home top. And your pants, probably. Well, I'm a pants, yes, but that's enough to be <laughs> together. <laughs> Is that your banana pants, Derek? <laughs> you know, your banana pants, yellow at the front and brown at the back. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway... Get that vision out of your head, folks. Derek, on you go. 
give us the ins and outs of this deal. Yes, basically the old seven-year rolling contract has been ripped up um, and there's now a much, much um, favoured split um, of the profits. Basically a 50-50 split of the profits of uh, tops and merchandise bought from the Sports Direct shops and their site and there's a 75-25% split of the profit in our favour um, if bought from the Rangers Megastore or the Megastore site. Uh, Sports Direct still linked with the deal for the next year. Basically they weren't going to walk away um, from the, the whole deal with nothing but in fairness it's only a year's deal and we've said all along all we want was a fair deal fair, was fair share mm-hmm. um, and we do recognise Sports Direct's um, you know, vast uh, retail empire so they certainly have got the distribution however given the fact what the, the mega store has been like with the limited stock uh, we don't know what's actually happening there. Are they are they holding back on stock, which would be stupidity from their point? But um, or is it just a case they weren't prepared for the uh, the complete um, utter meltdown in the store? There's been. I mean, we could all see what was going to happen, Derek. Uh, but I think it's possibly been an oversight on Sports Direct themselves, and apparently, according to the. Uh, club website last night they're having to manufacture new strips now the, the other thing about it is the fact that they are keeping last season strip which is now you know more than half price to buy everybody's just been going out and buying you know three and four strips at the one go and as I've said to you as, as everybody probably knows on their Twitter I am desperately trying to source a strip for my laddie and I can't get one anywhere Derek and I was even considering going in to Sports Direct I've got I've actually got a family member away into the Rangers Megastore today I know that you're going to the game tomorrow you're going to have a look for me tomorrow I'm desperate for him to get it for the, the summer holidays when he, you know we'll be going away places he's desperate to get it and like I've told you as well, we've just found out the squad numbers as well, and it just so happens that Bruno Alves is the same squad number as Maladi is in his team, so he's desperate to get that on the back of his top. And I just can't get them anywhere, Derek. I've looked online everywhere, I put tweets out, and a lot of people have been getting back to me. It's just impossible for me to get the full strip anywhere, and I know that if you're a man trying to get, you know, large or extra large, you've got absolutely no chance. Uh, I even went into my local Sports Direct to ask and speaking to them as you know they've got absolutely no clue I got told by one lassie that they're not getting any more in uh, to which I told her well you never had them in yesterday and you've got some in just now oh right oh well I don't know then and then another guy spoke to me as I said to him I said look are you getting it any more in he says we're getting a delivery every two days he says but we can't tell you what sizes we're getting in he says, there might be kids' ones there. I says, well, that's all I'm interested in. I would prefer to get it for the mega store, Derek. That's why I've, there's, there's family members going through, and I'll get you to check tomorrow also. But it's incredible. I'm hoping that the mega store's the first place to get restocked. I'd like to think so, especially with the record uh, world record crowd that will be at a Europa League qualifying match tomorrow night which uh, you know is a complete sellout you would like to think that the mega store will be completely restocked by then because that's the chance to make a hell of a lot of money but we're just going to have to wait and see I think the most concerning thing that you said there is I'm going to the game and I'm meant to be off in the pat and mick here so you've just rumbled me (laughs) (laughs) Aye, but you'll be in agony though, Derek. Aye, well, exactly. So, and and you'll be getting dropped off and picked back up again because you can't drive. Exactly. So, exactly. And you're going to have to stand up the back because you can't sit down or anything like no. that. So, so exactly. So yeah. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, certainly, as you said, <laughs> <laughs> swiftly moving on. But this this podcast was recorded uh, at the beginning of June. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, as, as you said, swiftly moving on, um, we, are, we are using the same home top as next year. Uh, that was purely down to our registration deadline. Uh, with no, no, no. According to all, uh, according to all the haters out there, according to all the haters out there, this is all gullible Rangers fans buying up old stock, and they're going to be bringing a ban- brand new strip out next month. Did you know read that, Derek? Oh, I, I did read that, but um... and and according to them as well, this deal doesn't kick in until the first of July. Apparently, which so, is a yeah. total fabrication again, because Dave King stated that the you know that deal had kicked in straight away. That uh, you know the the new 
uh, split for the proceeds, you know, was happening on that day. So where they're getting all this nonsense from, but it's the fact that there's people out there actually believing them, which is incredible. But no, I'm pleased that they're keeping the strip again for another season. It's uh, it's good. Uh, uh, also, see, see, be fair to Sports Direct, Derek, we've said it all along, just like what you said there, we were quite happy as long as we were getting a much better deal. And there's still a lot of people who uh, won't buy anything from Sports Direct, but as long as we were getting a, bit, a better deal, I was more than happy. And that, I'm sure you, you were exactly the same. Uh, but uh, let's name, get rid of all the stock that they had and sell it. And they'll make an absolute fortune out of this as well, Derek. Ah, but what, what a... stock we were led to believe there's millions of tops sitting in our warehouse there just exactly. gathering mothballs. But... Exactly. Well, there probably was Derek, but it was <laughs> sold in one day. <laughs> you know, I've seen pictures of guys coming out of the Rangers store, wee skinny guys, tiny wee skinny guys, coming out with size XXXXL tops and uh, just buying them for the sake of it, yeah. Derek. Do you know what I mean? So, and the Rangers uh, duck as well. Oh, the Rangers duck. Well, I think we should get one of them, Derek, and that should be now our new wee mascot for the podcast. We'll, just, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take a picture of the duck and that can go on as a Twitter header, I think, as uh, <laughs> the, the wee duck. But they're completely sold out as well, apparently, so there's no chance of getting one of them either. No, um, just on the on the note of um, the, the actual tops, there is apparently going to be a they're working with Puma to try and bring out a second and third top uh, in the next month or two. So we'll see what that that brings as well. Yep. Basically, the, the usual idiots from our fan base, and I don't even think they're, they're Rangers fans, um, you know, claiming X, Y, and Z, you know, about this and saying it's Ashley's, you know, Ashley's the winner out of this. And, and it's the same with the, the, as you were alluding to, with the, the fans from the, the other side of Glasgow as well. Just absolute bollocks. I'm, I've put out a tweet as well just saying, you know, don't engage with them. They're just complete, utter idiots. They really don't support the club. And, you know, if, if they do, then what is their, their mindset about? You know, even just try to slag off everything that's happened in the next Derek, in the last again, couple of weeks. Again, no, Derek. We've said this again. If this deal had been put in place, regardless, even uh, you know, a way back when it was all thrashed out to start off with, even if Sports Direct were getting even a slight advantage, they would have still have sold off, sold t- tons of their strips. I don't think that there's any, any Rangers fans out there would have had any problems with Sports Direct. You know, if they'd have stuck to that, if, if they'd have done this deal from the beginning, there, would, there wouldn't have been any hassle no, spots over. There'd have been no problems. There would have been nobody avoiding go, go, going into the store. But there is a lot of bad blood there. But for these idiots to come out and say, "Oh, it's Ashley that's really won there," well, you know, Ashley's going to make a lot of money out of this. Of course, he is. But so is the club, and that's basically just what we were looking for. I mean, yeah. let's let's be honest. We we, we weren't looking. I mean, long gone of the days where we're going to get a hundred percent of the profits, or you know, ninety percent of profits. It doesn't work like that anymore, especially when you've got distributors like that, or any sportswear distributor, you know, throughout the world. It, it, it's, it's it's not going to work like that. But I'm delighted that this has been. Uh, sorted and who knows what could happen in a year's time Derek it might be Sports Direct again Yeah, more that's, that's, a, that, that's going to do it because they will see the amount of money that they're going to make over the next season and they'll say oh well you know we really can't afford to let this go and that will be favourable for us as well so uh, absolutely fantastic and hats off to the guys in charge that managed to, to broker this deal I know there's a lot of people out there still sceptical of Dave King, Derek, and I was one of them as well. But to be fair to the guy, he's came good on the vast majority of things that he said he was going to, and long may it continue. Yep. Uh, and the next bit of good news involving Ashley is he's sold all of his shares in, in Rangers. Uh, he's Fantastic. made a, apparently a £400,000 loss on them as well. Yep. Half of them bought by Club 18-72. 18 to 72, I keep saying that. Club 1872, mm-hmm. and half by uh, businessman Julian Waldhard, uh, who is a CEO of a Hong Kong based private private equity firm. Um, okay. I think that's been overlooked from, from that point of view. That's a possibly very, very lucrative uh, deal, having him on board as a major, as a, a shareholder of about 4%. Um, it could, could lead into breaking into the Chinese market because he has said it is an exciting thing to see what we can do commercially with Rangers so yes. um, it could be very very lucrative for us and hats off to um, Club 1872 as well as I put out on a tweet um, certainly much criticism and a lot of it justified has been levelled
marvelled at them over the last, over the well, really since their inception. Um, but certainly they have stepped up to the the, the mark and and you know bought these shares and they're now the second biggest single shareholder, yep. at eleven odd percent. So certainly it's uh, the next milestone. Um, for, for for me, Derek, I thought that was absolutely fantastic. It's it's shown you that the second biggest shareholder are. Rangers fans who are putting their money in to look after the club and the future of the club as well. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know, as you say, there's been a few problems before where, you know, things getting bandied about back and forward. But at the end of the day, just to have Rangers men in there, normal Rangers fans, you know, involved in the club, it looks really, really rosy going forward with the fact that these guys, and hopefully they'll be able to get more and more, uh, you know, on their dream to basically being the majority shareholders in the club. It's great news. Yep, and apparently their membership's absolutely rocketed after that news as well. So uh-huh. um, it's still something I've not personally put in in. Um I've not personally signed back up again. Um, there's still obviously a lot of questions in terms of the board. They're still only working with, I think, three board members and um, you know a, a working group, as it were, and that's who've put in place the, obviously this the shareholding. Obviously, the stockpile of money was there, and they were sitting on that until there was a new share issue um, or somebody sold their shares in in this case. But um, certainly, there's a few things to be worked out there. It's going in the right direction. Finally, it looks like. Um, so we'll, I'll certainly wait and see about. Um, what happens over the next coming months if they can yep. get, get something sorted with a, a proper board put in place and a, a wee bit more structure that way. Yes. Um, next thing is we did mention on the last podcast that Mark Allen has finally officially been appointed as director of football, so he'll be in place working alongside Pedro Cascina. Exactly. Another thing that Dave King said he was going to do, another thing that the haters of the club said wasn't going to happen and was a lot of nonsense. So, you know, delighted that we've got that in place as well. The guy's got a very impressive CV. I don't know much about the guy at all, but he's certainly highly thought of, uh, you know, at Manchester City. So we just have to wait and see how that pans out. But it's certainly going forward looks excellent. Uh, it's certainly something that's really not been done in Scotland before. I no. know that Craig Levine is the director of football at Hearts, and um, it's uh, questionable how that's turning out, out the now. We've obviously had Dick Advoca as a director of football before, but I think that was largely a, a, a kind of a figurehead position when he moved from being a manager, stepped up yep. to those, and he was only in about six months, I think. Yes. And it's the same with Gordon Smith, uh, but that was uh, another six-month appointment, and that was during the, the Craig White um time so I don't think he had any influence at all on on the, the outcome of, of what he was meant to be doing so we'll need yep. to see how it pans out it certainly works mm-hmm. abroad so uh, yeah. it's an interesting time certainly exactly and you mentioned Dave King he's been certainly on the wind up uh, in the press over the last uh, you know, few days basically saying that four of Celtic's titles don't count uh, when talking about 10 in a row because we weren't there to compete exactly uh, which is which is absolutely true you know it's, it, it, it's hilarious Derek as you say on the wind up and so I mean it's just you just knew that the, 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 the media in Scotland would be absolutely livid with this and it would be plastered all over the back pages as their sort of main news and stuff like that the guy was trying to get, you know, it was it, it, it was a wind up. It was it was t- tongue in cheek. We, we're all laughing about it. It's great. You, we can, you know, there's a, a lot of ban- a banter out there. But the way that it's been portrayed in the media is absolutely shocking. And it's, he's only telling what most Rangers fans think. And when you look at it, it's the truth because nobody really cares if a team bloody wins twenty in a row. Uh, you know, if there's no competition, I mean that's what a lot of prominent, um, you know, pundits have kind of alluded to over the uh, certainly in England anyway mm-hmm. over the last yep. couple of years is well, there's no competition, there's no yep. no merit in winning something when you've no competition. No, mm-hmm. no other club other than Rangers or Celtic will win the league, and I think that's been proven proven over the last you know four or five years for the fact that we've not been there. You know, the, the other clubs haven't got the sustaining power to no. do it. So no. I mean, I, there is a you know case that King should maybe just shut up and and uh, you know just let the, the 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 talking on the park do the job. You but- would you would think Derek a man. I mean, I I know he spends a vast majority of his time outside of the country, but the media are like rabid beasts when it comes to us. You know, there's nothing. Uh, you know, with that, all, all the fantastic news that we've had over the last few weeks, they're still trying as much as they can to 
you know, drag her name through through the dirt. That's just the way that it is at the moment. So you would think he would know or, or someone would be advising him to say, look, if you say this, it's going to make, you know, the main headlines in the back of the papers and everything, and they'll do everything to discredit you, which they have done. But whether he's basically said, well, I really don't give a monkey's what the Scottish media say, <laughs> and I'm going to say it anyway. It has been funny, Derek, and we've been able to have a good laugh at it. But as I say, the media again, blow it all out of proportion again and, and, and make it a huge thing. So And it's folk jumping on the back of it. They also said that you know Celtic should have been further ahead of us last year, which it was a very smart thing to uh, to say, I think, because any way you put you, any way the opposition come at it, it's going to make you look like a fanny as yeah. as it's done with, with Lee Griffiths. Basically the way I've taken it is well if you come out and say um you know agree with them, you're obviously saying, you know, Celtic weren't good enough last year. If uh-huh. you, if you come out as Griffiths done and said well well, that's absolute nonsense, you know. We were look, we won five one against you twice. We were thirty odd points ahead. It's making out as if well, Celtic couldn't have done better, so they couldn't have won six one. Then they couldn't have got forty odd points, nah, thirty odd points. So it's it's kind of played right into it there, which I don't think a lot of people have picked up on. And as usual, Chris Sutton had to have his say. Comes out and tells King to grow up over his unnecessary comments re- regarding two in a row. Quite grow ironic. Up. You know, Hilarious. Quite ironic given that he's based his whole post football career on unnecessary childish comments, isn't he? So Exactly. And uh, and retweeting us, Derek. Well, I mean, I, how, yeah. how how dare he? <laughs> and I mean and really when, when you look at it, the wee tweet that you know that you put out to him with regards to what the Pedro Cushini had said about Aberdeen going through a cycle. It's uh, it's true. I mean, I mean, if if if, if you look at it like that, it's, it's it's all coming true. Aberdeen will basically have to completely restart again next season. They've not brought anyone in at all, and they're they're losing all their players. I think they've lost about six players, and we've also again been linked to Kenny McLean. I don't know how true that will be, or if that will put pan out as well. But uh, you know, but he had to come in just because Derek McInnes turned down that such so underlying job. He had to go through everybody who obviously had set, sent him a wee tweet and retweet them back again. Uh, you know, quite sad. And as you say, for, for a man to brand it, brandish anybody as being childish, oh, exactly. you know, he should be keeping his mouth shut. Let's let's be honest. But uh, he is the gift that keeps giving, though, Derek, when it comes to the the, the Scottish media. It's, it's, it's actually quite it's, it's actually quite good because. Uh, you know, it gives us all somebody to have a wee laugh at, as well as the rest of the idiots that are out there. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy for him to keep spouting his nonsense. Yeah. Um, moving on to um, the Europa League qualifiers now. Obviously, the draw for the first and second round qualifying games. As you've said, we've got a first game coming up um, against um, a Luxembourg side, Progress Niederkorn, um, mm-hmm. have, and that's tomorrow. That's a 1945 kickoff. Um, they have never won a Euro game before. They've only scored one goal in 12 Euro matches, and they previously got draws against Glen Torren and Shamrock Rovers previously in their first legs. Um, should we beat Progress, uh, we have either a trip to Cyprus to face AEL Limassol or St Joseph's FC from Gibraltar, and the two games will be played on the 13th and the 20th of July. Obviously, bearing in mind, the games might get moved because of stadium issues. Yep. Um, obviously, the away game for the Progress game has been moved to Tuesday the 4th of July. Um, that's be- been moved because the... Um, their Progress's home stadium only held 4,000 fans, whereas the National Stadium holds 8,000 fans. Okay. And they had to move the stadium the, the day up because the, the pitch was getting relayed or something like that, I think. All right, OK. Um, or they had a previous event there, so um, certainly that'll be a good good fixture for, for people anyway. Um, yep. What's your thoughts? How do you think we'll, we'll fare in the, the first leg or the first uh, round anyway? Derek, I'd like to think with those stats that you've given us that we are pl- pay- we're playing a very, very poor team and I'm no being dis- disrespectful to them. So I would like to think on paper that we'll have a comfortable two matches and we'll win it quite easily. I'm no tempting fate here. The The only uh, concern I have is the fact that we basically do have a completely new team uh, and I know we've been playing a lot of get closed door matches, and you know the the pre season training started early. Uh, I just hope the team can gel together. Uh, we just have to put our faith in the manager that he knows, you know, the players that he's brought in and knows how how they're going to perform, and they're all gelling, you know, really well. Yeah. 
Um, I, I'm like you. It's, we're, we're a bit of an unknown just now. Um, certainly, there's the squad who he's, t- he's taken to the game anyway has been announced, and there's a couple of omissions like Halliday, which we'll get into, um, and uh, Joe Dodu. Um, but certainly, you know, it's, it's as we kind of mentioned on the, the, the last pod, is the, the rundown of the players he's brought in. They've certainly got, you know, good good quality there by the look of it, and they're certainly, you know, a good pedigree from from their home countries. So uh, you've got to trust in the manager in this case, and you know that's the reason why we're playing friendlies as well. Just on that note, we did play. Um, th- we've played three closed doors friendlies. Fifteenth of June, five nil one against Coleraine. Nineteenth uh, of June, it was a one each draw with Wellside uh, New, the, the New Saints, they're called. Mm-hmm. Yep. And twenty yep. second of June, a nil each draw with St Johnson. A lot of people kind of go into these and in, then a the minutia of it and or analyse everything. But you know, they're, they're, at the end of the day, their game is just to build fitness, build a, an awareness within the team. I don't take much in, in the results at all. To be honest, we could get beat. I really don't care with, with the pre season friendlies. No, especially the closed door ones, Derek. I mean, the pre-season friendlies, you know, the big ones that they have, you know, actually at Ibrox and stuff like that, you know, you can take a wee bit more into that with the fact that the fans are paying a lot of money to go and watch it. You would like to think that the team puts a wee bit more effort, but certainly these closed door matches that they play, and I believe the games were played, you know, when they were split into three sections, you know, and there was something like 20... 20, you know, the full 22 players of the squad were used, you know, and you know, and the, the matches have been chopping and changing all the time. So you really can't take anything into that. We just hope that those games have prepared these new players and getting, you know, it's, it's all about them gelling here, Derek. We're spe- we've spent, you know, in, in our terms over the last few years, we've spent a hell of a lot of money on certain players. We just have to hope that you know that they you know get out the traps flying, and that's really what we need. We need a good performance Thursday night, and like I said, it's going to be apparently a world record for a Europa League qualifying match. I think the biggest attendance at a Europa League qualifying match has been thirty six thousand. Ibrox is a complete sellout, so they'll smash that one. And uh, I think just the fans are just really looking forward to seeing all the new players playing and everybody turning up with a new the new tops on Derek. Well, the half the stadium that I've got them anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, just in terms of fixtures as well, the fixtures were announced for the start of the season. Um, our first game is on Saturday the 5th of August away to Motherwell. First home game, um, it's, a, it's a big game, is Saturday the 12th of August at home to Hibs. Uh, next game, Saturday the 19th of August at home to Harps. Saturday the 26th of August away to Ross County. And the f- three old firm games that have been announced so far are the 23rd of September at Ibrox, 30th of December at Celtic Park and 10th of March at Ibrox now obviously all of these games are subject to change due to television yep. so uh, they probably will get changed at some I, point I hope the one on the 23rd of September gets changed Derek because on the 23rd of September this year is my wife's 40th birthday and on that date we will be in Orlando and we have got everything booked up things all sorted for her sort of special day, her friends are coming with us, so uh, I'm hoping and praying that that gets changed to the next day or, you know, something like that, because I'll have to try and find some place in Florida that I can get to watch it, and I know that if it's on that particular day, I'll have absolutely no chance, so I'm praying that it gets changed. Oh, my heart's pumping shape Ex- for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a hardship, eh, being in Florida. Exa- Exactly, but the good the good thing is that there's good Wi-Fi around the Disney and all the parks and everything like that. So I could probably just stand and watch the game on my phone as well, <laughs> St- standing in line for Tower of Terror and things like that. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, one thing that Rangers have launched as well, and it's a thing that the other clubs launch. I can't remember who what the company is, but they've launched a, a fixture app that th- that kind of links into your calendar of your phone or your computer, which is absolutely fantastic. And from what I've seen, it updates automatically if fixtures get changed. So um, it's certainly a good way to to keep track of the fixtures. Oh, as, excellent. As Come on then, Derek. What's it called? Is it on the App Store? What is it? Did you if, know? You, if you go through to, if you go into the Rangers website and you go to um, the f- news or the fixtures page, there's a wee link there and a wee button, and it, you know you press that and it takes you another page where you can link up to whatever you want it to do. So excellent. Certainly a, a good thing to do. Quality. 
Right, um, players we've brought in, um, a couple of other just confirmations here. Um, Morelos has signed and Peña and Herrera have finally put pen to paper as well. I think that deal was more or less done in the last podcast. It was just waiting on their, their work permits. Um, so certainly interesting to see them. Mixed reviews, um, I've heard of, of Herrera apparently, he's, you know, a bit hit and miss, but again, it's one of these things we just need to eat in the manager we trust, so. Yeah, exactly. And we've also signed 18 year old goalkeeper Aidan McAdams from Celtic, of all people, uh, for a fee as well. Initially £40,000, which could rise to £150,000. Certainly, yep. if he's only 18, he's had a very, very hard paper round anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, that's a bit strong, Derek. Good guy. <laughs> um, players have went out. Um, a very, very surprising one. Andy Halliday is uh, apparently jetting off the now, and he's away to Azerbaijan of all places yeah. um, for a season-long loan. It's a, a very strange one. Um, a fair play to the player. I know a lot of people, you know, praise him because he's one of the PPL and all that kind of <sighs> thing. But I don't, I don't buy into this. He was on. Is it good in the championship? Very yes. average in the, the Premiership, yep. but again, we, he was a player in a, a very average to shit team. So, yeah, we uh, we we went over this before, Derek. There's there's no one questioning the guy's commitment. He's Ranger staff. He's delighted to be here. Uh, and the back pages is some some of the papers today. He's basically said, "Look, I'm going on loan, but the only reason I'm going on loan is to prove." that I'm good enough to play for Rangers, I'm not going to give up on my dreams. So, I mean, he's to be commended for that. The guy's desperate to stay, and if he feels about going, it's just surprised that he's going to a place like Azerbaijan or something like that. Derek, I was sure he could have got, you know, a team in Scotland, you know, to go, you know, a, a team at the lower end of the Premier League or whatever in Scotland, and that would have kept him more in the limelight. If you know, what I mean, if yeah. he was playing, if he was playing well for a Ross County, or playing well for a Dundee, or somebody like that, it would let us see that he is, you know, pl- playing well at this level. So Azerbaijan's a bit of a strange one for me, Derek. I don't know what the what the details are in that one, or why he would want to go there. Bit of a strange one, but there's been quite a few of the players have been left out of the named squad. A few players who were quite happy to see not being in it, but a few players that we're quite surprised about as well, and uh, the, the next player uh, that I think that has been linked to leaving us, which we weren't sure about, is Barry Mackay. Yeah. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Mark Warburton at Nottingham Forest wanting to buy him because he liked him and stuff like that. I don't know what your your feelings are, Derek. I, I like Mackay. I've said that before. I know he has, you know, he, he goes through patches where he's very quiet, but that's what happens with wingers, Derek, unless you're a, you know, a world-class player. It doesn't matter what level you're at, wingers do have hot and cold periods. I mean, I, I remember Neil McCann with Rangers. He was a fantastic player for us, absolutely sensational. But McCann would go through three or four games at a time where he would be very, very quiet and then he would suddenly, for two or three games after that, be absolutely sensational. It's one of the positions, Derek, where you do blow hot, hot or cold, but I'm actually quite sorry to see him go. I think with uh, you know, the proper management and better players round about him, he would have been a real good player for us. But again, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with him. Yeah, I mean, as you said, he does blow hot and cold. Uh, I don't like the way a lot of fans are getting on his back. I think it's a case of they see his potential, and when he doesn't fulfil it, they, you know, they really slate him, and that can't be doing him much good either. But um, no. you know, certainly he's, he's he's still young enough. He, I think, last year, I think for a lot of players was a mixture of bad attitudes and just know the right system working for them so it's, it's quite hard to judge that way but we'll, we'll obviously just need to wait and see Put, what happens with him. Let's be honest Derek as well and again it's no way slating it was a very poor to average team that he was playing in so you know he had a lot of crosses in, in, into the box and you know just nobody getting on the end of it this is another a thing that annoys me when people are actually, you know, upset about Joe Garner leaving. You know, I, you know me, Derek. I didn't rate the guy at all, and there's a lot of people out there are making it as if he was bloody, you know, the reincarnation of Mark Hately when he was at Rangers, which he certainly wasn't. I think if we'd have had a half decent striker in there, him and Mackay would have been really good up front for Rangers, but it just it, it, it didn't work out. But as I say, we'll have to wait and see. I would have no hard feelings about the, the laddie at all, and if he went down to the Championship 
Championship, Derek, I think he would thrive in there because the Championship is not a great league and I don't care what anybody says there either, Derek. There's a hell of a lot of money in it, but the standard of the Championship's not that great in England. The standard of defender is not that great. Uh, so I think he would do really well. It's uh, it's it's a famous league. There's a hell of a lot of money to be made, but that doesn't mean to say that it's a very you know a great standard. And it's no because I watch a lot of the championship games in England, and it's uh, and as we know as well, bringing up second great players for the championship, how poor that they've been playing in Scotland. So I think Mackay would actually do really well doing there. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. Apparently. Again, looking at what the media are saying, he's been told that he's got to go and train with the under-20 team. I don't know what's happening there, if that's you know showing us all that he'll not play for us again or whatever. I don't know. We'll just Again, it's one of these things. We'll see what pans out. Yep. And as you also said there, Joe Gardner has left uh, to go to Ipswich for around a million pounds, apparently. So. Yeah, exactly. Absol- I'm delighted with that one, Derek. I know there's a lot of pe- people out there, for some reason, seem to think that the guy was a really good player and all that. I thought he was a donkey. I really did. You know, He had a couple of good headers for us, but I thought he was getting himself into bother every game. You know, uh, Everybody was going on, oh, but he gave a 100%. I would like to think of every player gives a hundred percent, Derek. I just didn't think it worked. It was a poor, poor decision uh, by the old regime to bring him in. I think they thought he was going to be a, like a goal machine for us up here. It was very poor. There wasn't a lot of movement with the guy at all. He wasn't the type of player, and I'm I'm sick and tired of all this as well. Oh, but he's never played that system before, and he's always played two up front. No, I'm sorry. If you're any good. You'll put away chances, clear cut chances, and he wasn't Derek. He wasn't. So no, I'm delighted he's away. Good luck to the guy. You know, doing an up switch, he might play better doing there when there's not as much expectation in the club. But uh, I'm delighted that he's away. To be honest with you. I don't know. I'm getting this impression that you're no a fan of Joe Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> you just realised that, Derek. <laughs> No, um, it's, it, it is annoying me, Derek, the amount of responses that we're getting for folks saying, oh, you know, he was he was a great player and it wasn't his fault, he wasn't playing two up front. No, they obviously weren't they watching him, Derek, and seeing the amount of chances that he was missing, clear-cut chances, so no, it doesn't, doesn't wash with me. Um, players that we have bid on, apparently, is uh, Graham Dorans, a uh, £1.3 million pound bid. Um, apparently, according to the papers today, that's been accepted. Um, yes, I've seen, I've, I've seen it myself. Yep. And uh, Walker from Hearts now they, they apparently want one million pound for him. Uh, bearing in mind that he's out of contract in a year's time, um, I wouldn't even pay anywhere near that if you're getting Graham Dorans for one point three. So exactly. Aye. So that can get. I would be delighted with him, Derek. I think he would be a fantastic player. Like we said in the last pod, I think he would score a lot of goals. Uh, you know, and it's good to have that mixture of bringing in the Scottish players as well. Good Scottish players at that. But as you say, in January they could sign him in a pre-contract, and then you know. So I think Hearts are cutting their nose off, the, you know, despite their face there in that one. And I think if they were to get even half a million pounds, say even six hundred thousand for for him, I would, uh, you know, I would grab it. But again, we will just have to wait and see what happens with that one. Yep, and obviously you said before as well rumours that uh, McLean from Aberdeen are um, were bidding on him, but apparently they've said that he's not for sale. But they said that about Ryan Jack as well. So look what happened. Exactly, but uh, I think Aberdeen might uh, make it very, very difficult for us to buy him. Like very, very difficult just with, with, with everything and the the relationships with the clubs and things like that. So I. I don't see that one happening, Derek, to be honest with you. I'm not overly bothered with that, to be honest, but anyway. but um, Anyway, we will move on now. That's all the good news stories away. We will move on now and we'll go to the classic match. Manchester, brace yourself. Rangers are coming! Already? Already, yes. My God, we're only like... 45 minutes in it exactly shocker isn't it right Derek today's classic match since finally after 6 years we have a European match played at Ibrox tomorrow night I thought why don't we make the classic match this week a game that Rangers played in the 
well, it was the UEFA Cup back at this point, but the Europa League UEFA Cup, however you want to pronounce it. And I had a look back to uh, round about 2000, 2001 time, and I saw uh, a fantastic result that we had away from home against Dynamo Moscow, or Moscow Dynamo, however you want to, to say it. So Dynamo Moscow now... It was actually the return fixture, Derek, in Moscow on the 2nd of November 2001. Like I said, UEFA Cup game. We were winning 3-1 on aggregate from the home leg at Ibrox. I was at that match. Uh, I'll run you through the Rangers team on that day. Fantastic team with some great names in there. First of all, Stefan Kloss and goals. Fernando Rickson, Craig Moore. Lorenzo, Amoruso and Arthur Newman, that was her back four. Into midfield, Big Bert Conterman playing that uh, defensive midfielder role. Barry Ferguson, centre midfield. Claudio Reyna on the right-hand side of midfield. Claudio Canigia playing a sort of left-hand side role with Newman, more of a sort of left-hand striker. Ronald De Boer and Torrey Andre Flo up front for Rangers. Uh, like I said, Rangers were winning 3-1 in aggregate, so it was very important for Rangers to try and get an early goal to put the game to bed. Now, on that night, Rangers were wearing an unfamiliar kit, Derek. It was the red version of the old Nike NTL strip. Do you remember that one? Really smart. Oh, yes. The NTL strip we had was just blue and white. And so this was a red version of that. We were wearing that on the night. It's quite strange to see us playing in red and white, but a really smart strip. Now, on that night, it was uh, really bad torrential rain that had been uh, leading up to that game, so the pitch was uh, cutting up really badly. It was really slippy. It was puddles everywhere. It was a bit of a nightmare, but Rangers put the, be- the game to bed early. Within sort of five minutes, we could see the intent. Arthur Newman... Uh, put the ball into the path of Cloud- Claudio Reyna. It would have been easier for him to score, but he put the shot wide. But we opened the scoring on the eighth minute. Bert Contraman and Lorenzo Amoruso are up into a packed penalty box. Craig Moore is there as well. In from Canesia. Good one from Contraman. And there's the opening goal. And it's well to Burr. Now 4-1 in aggregate. When the Dynamo Moscow player had gifted Rangers a corner from a missed kick clearance, uh, went out for a corner. Uh, the ball was played in. Now you could see Ronald De Boer uh, grappling with one of the defenders. The defender was trying to pull him back or pulling each other back forward, back forward. The ball got lofted in, uh, and it was Bert Conterman with the flick on. The ball landed right at the back post. De Boer managed to wriggle clear, and there it was, just to tap the ball in at the back post. Got away from his marker, tapped the ball in. That. Settled everybody down. That was us winning 4 1 in aggregate. There was no way that Dynamo Moscow were going to get back from that. We only had to wait another sort of five or six minutes to the next sort of b- bit of action. Torrey Andre Flo picked up the ball on the left hand side to Claudio, uh, to, to Claudio, to Claudio <laughs> Kinija, who was running on, and then he saw again Claudio Reyna. Too many Claudios in the team. Claudio Reyna. Right in front of him, he had a fantastic shot that was saved by the goalkeeper out for a corner. And from that corner in the 16th minute, we extended our lead. Ferguson, useful ball in. Kovatowski has missed it. And it's 2-0 on the night. And now 5-1 overall. And that's a howler by Vasily Kovatowski. He was under some pressure. But the ball went straight through his hands. The corner was played short to Barry Ferguson, who put the cross into the box, and then the goalkeeper, a complete howler, he completely grabbed the ball, slipped out of his hands, ended up in the back of the net. Total shocker. This was now Rangers completely into training game mode, winning 5-1 five, five in aggregate, two away goals. But again, it didn't stop there though, Derek, because Dynamo did pull a goal back 10 minutes later on the 26th minute. It was a free kick. Uh, and the Dynamo player had a fantastic shot, curled it round the goalkeeper, but into the low bottom left-hand corner of Stefan Kloss's goal. No chance. That was the score on the night. 2-1 to Rangers, uh, and that would have been 5-2 in aggregate. But just five minutes before half-time... 
That's lovely stuff from Ronald De Boer. Through for Flo. Here's a chance for number three. Tori Andrew Flo finishes in some style. Set up by De Boer. Now 3 1 on the evening. Ronald De Boer again get, picks the ball up just inside his own half, beats his man, takes a few steps, and plays the most perfect through ball. To Torrey Andre Flo, who just basically ran in a straight line. The ball was put right in front of him. He took one touch just to the edge of the box and had a fantastic shot right in the top left-hand corner of the goal. Tremendous goal for Rangers. That made it 3-1 to Rangers on the night. Uh, Half-time came uh, at that point. Then into the second half, we'd basically done the business, Derek. It was all down, a lot of passing passing the ball about, very, you know, low-key affair. And then on the 72nd minute, Rangers had made a double substitution. Uh, Ronald De Boer and Claudio Carigia came off to be replaced by Peter Lovenkranz and uh, Latipe. Remember Latipe? Oh, yeah. he, uh, he was there as well. Uh, so we thought that was all over. But then on the 78th minute, we wrapped up the scoring that night and it was basically... From a long ball. Good work from Flo. Finds Latape. Lovenkrantz makes a good one. Excellent pass. Chance for Lovenkrantz. It's 4-1 on the night. Brilliant pass from Latape. It was inch perfect. And that's a cool finish from Lovenkrantz. 4-1, now 7-2. Stefan Kloss kicked the ball on. The ball landed at the feet of Torre Andre Flo who sort of flicked the ball over his shoulder onto the wing. Russell Latape was running down the right-hand side. And then who comes steaming up the middle fast as anything? Peter Lovenkranz. Latape saw him running just at the corner of his eye. Played a fantastic ball through for Peter Lovenkranz. He ran through. He was a wee bit fortunate. The ball sort of stuck in the mud, but that gave him enough time to flick the ball round. Rounded the goalkeeper, tapped the ball into the net. Rangers won 4 1 on the night, 7 2 in aggregate. Tremendous score away from home, Derek, especially against a famous name like uh, Dynamo Moscow. Uh, absolutely great game to look back on, and here's hoping that uh, games like that would inspire the players to a similar scoreline over the next two matches. So, great stuff. Go back and watch it if you can. Yep, uh, uh, you just highlighted my sentiments exactly there about hoping that it inspires the players to, to pull out another result like that. Yep, it certainly does. Look, looking back at that, Derek, I think we all get, gave the guy a hard time at that point, but Tori Andre Flo was on something like, at that point in the season, 13 goals, it was something like 15 starts he'd had for Rangers. I don't know, I can remember being one of the people that criticised the guy, but, you know... I don't know what we were maybe looking for. I think we were maybe looking for an absolute world beater just because of the amount of money that we'd paid for him. And we would certainly do anything to have a prolific striker like that than who going into the next season. But uh, I don't know what, because he, he really was. And he was criticised a lot by the Rangers supporters. Flo and certainly got going back by that season. Scored a hell of a lot of goals for us. Yeah. So we'll be back next episode with another classic match. Yeah. So it's now time to move on to the news. From ITN, the ITV News at 10 with Trevor McDonald. All right, just a few bits and pieces here to go. Um, we have former Rangers player... Steve Davis has been awarded an MBE for services to football in Northern Ireland. Yes, great stuff. Yep, captain of Northern Ireland in the Euro Championships last year, so well done to him. Yep, fantastic. Uh, Marvin Andrews, uh, good old Marv, has yep. been uh, booked out. He's booked out for the next eighteen months for officiating weddings. He's Is that a, right? He's a, officiated over countless uh, uh, fans' weddings and even Nacho, no, Nacho Novo's wedding as well. Fantastic. Um, and there's also a weird story. He also wants to exercise demons from a house where five nannies have quit in a year after experiencing supernatural activity. <laughs> So not only is he the scourge of Celtic, he's the scourge of demons as well, yeah? Exactly. Keep Fantastic. believing, Mark. Keep believing. Keep believing, yep, definitely. <laughs> 
Another ex-Rangers player here, uh, Kyle Lafferty. It looks as if he's maybe either going to be signing for Hearts or Hibs. Uh, he was apparently you know, in talks with Hearts yesterday and now he's in talks with Hibs today, so we'll see how that pans out. Yeah, I saw that. There's uh, a guy at my work, a big jambo, and he actually broke the story to me about well over a week ago. Uh, and apparently they're interested in signing Alan McGregor as well. Right. So I don't know how that will pan out as well. I'll be very surprised if Lafferty signs for Hibs, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, exactly. And other former Ranger here is former manager Paul Le Guin is back in management after two years out of the game. Oh, really? Uh, right. He's now the head coach of Turkish side at Borzaspor. Oh, I get a team that we played in the Champions League a few seasons ago. Yes. That was, uh, was that Kenny Miller or Chris Boyd's team when Kenny they were Miller. there? Kenny Miller's team. Oh, there you go. So I take it they're a top flight team, or a t- t- top flight in the Turkish League then, Derek, yeah? They probably won't be for much longer with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a wee bit harsh on him there, but uh, you know what I'm, I'm getting at. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sitting here waiting to see what you've plucked up for us this week, considering that Smash My Pasty was, uh, you know, was in the last <laughs> was in the last podcast. So, in, anybody wants to know about Smash My Pasty, just uh, d- download the previous podcast and you'll hear all about it. Yes, we've reached that time again. Woman issues warning after having four-inch sex toys surgically removed from her bottom. Okay. The incident happened when a male acquaintance got excited and pushed the stainless steel toy too hard and it had vanished. After attempts to manually re- retrieve it failed, she says that the man suggested leaving it to naturally work its way out. Okay. And then he scarpered claiming he had work early in the morning. <laughs> what happened after that, Derek? Was it a hospital job? Well... A concerned friend rushed her to hospital where doctors warned her that they had a risk of perforating her bowel due to the sharp edge and she faced an hour-long surgery. Oh, dear. So, people, uh, don't put mm-hmm. things up your bum. Well, apparently, Derek, apparently, now there was a programme on, I don't know if it was, uh, you know these hospital programmes for flying fly the wall things, I'm sure it was done in Manchester. Apparently, that's a very common occurrence of people go, going into A and E departments and things like that with things stuck up there. So apparently, it's maybe not as uh, uncommon as you think. Well, funnily, you should say that because <laughs> ER doctors tell the craziest reasons people put things up their bum. Okay, go for it. This is coming from the obviously the ER doctor. When he was first interning at a trauma centre, a dude said he went into his daughter's bathroom since his wife was taking a shower in theirs. He says he slipped and a Barbie went up his ass. <laughs> when we did the x-ray, we saw the Barbie. Not only was she all the way up there, but her arms were straight up and her hair was everywhere. It really looked like she was having a grand time. And, and before she went in, she was a blonde Barbie. When she came out, she was a dark <laughs> brown Barbie. <laughs> Another doctor. On my emergency medicine rotation, an elderly male came in with a light bulb up his rectum. We asked about domestic abuse, but instead he stated his wife had a low libido and he was looking for a, a charge. Okay. As you do. As you do. The doctor said, I'm guessing it wasn't the brightest idea you ever had. Boom, boom. Hey. Next doctor. In a hospital I worked through university, word used to get round pretty quick when someone came in with something up their bum. They always said they fell on it. One was Mm -hmm. a tennis ball. He said he was watching tennis on TV while naked (laughs) and playing with tennis balls. Then one fell on the floor. And then he fell on it. (laughs) He was watching tennis naked with the tennis ball. Exactly. I should do I'm getting a horrible woman vision, Derek. I'm just like, I think, I think you should move on to the next one. My ex girlfriend is a nurse in A&E and she came in with all sorts of weird and wonderful stories. One that stands out is this guy that came up with a rubber snake firmly lodged up his beige daisy. <laughs> He's what? He's, sorry, I can't laugh because... Stuck, stuck up his what? Two seconds. Did you say beige daisy? 
<laughs> there you go. In my 42 years, I have never, ever, ever heard him being described as a beige daisy. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh. That's actually funnier than the story. <laughs> oh, I'm stopping now. Oh, stick it right up your base, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that one the next time. Oh dear, right, okay. Right, um on that note. On that note. Yes. So, um we've got a good things to look forward to tomorrow and um, hopefully anyway. And yep. um that wraps it up for the, the pre-season podcast. Fantastic. And that's an hour exactly, Derek. Yeah. So. Superb. That's probably the shortest podcast ever. But no, it's been great, Derek. The fans have absolutely reveled in all the news over the last few weeks. Signings have been coming in, spending money on players. The retail deal's been sorted. Everybody's able to go out and buy the strips again. Uh, we can look forward to next season in negotiating a brand new deal with whoever. I think we'll make a hell of a lot of money. Uh, things are really looking up for us. We just have to hope that the team now gels in time for the season starting, all the new players that we've brought in, and hopefully it'll be able to add a couple of more quality players. But certainly a lot to look forward to, Derek, and I can't wait. Yep. It'll be certainly interesting to see, and it's it's the most excited I've been for a very very long time with, with Rangers. So, um, good good times ahead, we hope. Exactly, good stuff. Okay, right, we'll call it a day there, Derek. Yep. Thanks a lot for listening. Okay, and goodbye. guys, goodbye.